Hey guys, it's Al from Spirit Studios. Uh, welcome to my little home studio here in Manchester where I'm going to be making a track as part of the Creative Block series. Uh, I'm going to be using Logic Pro for this and we're going to start things off with some sampling. So let's jump into Logic and I'll show you what we're working with. Cool, so the idea behind uh, this challenge is to use the contents of this sample pack as a starting point for a track. Um, and I've put these loops together and you guys can actually download this pack and, and use this to get the ball rolling for your own uh, your own projects. But I'll, uh, I'll bring in the main loop and you can give it a listen and you'll probably be able to tell that I was sort of inspired by kind of vintage soul uh, records. The idea behind this loop was that it could maybe sound like it had been sampled from like an old vinyl or something like that. Cool, so that's the full loop that we have, but you might not necessarily want to use all the instruments together in the mix. So I've also included the stems uh, from that loop in the pack here, which basically means that if you want, you could just use like the keys. So I'm actually going to start things off with the keyboard loop. So I'm going to take this and drag it over to the uh, sidebar here in Logic and just drop it straight into the quick sampler and we're going to use this to chop the sample up. So with it in quick sampler, if I go over to the slice mode, uh, this is going to basically chop up the, uh, the sample into lots of individual pieces. And you can see these uh, yellow markers here indicate where it's been chopped. Now what I want to do is actually chop this sample up uh, every time the chords change in the chord progression. So to have a little bit more control over this, I'm going to change the mode from uh, transient down here over to equal divisions. And now what I can do is actually grab these slice markers and move them around so that they line up with the chord changes. So let's do that now. So with that all chopped up, we can now put down a new chord progression using the MIDI keyboard. So with that chord progression down, I'm going to run the sample through a few additional plugins just to give it a bit more character. So over here we've got a little radiator which is adding some saturation. We've also got the filter freak which is giving it a bit more uh, movement. And then I'm just going to also cut out these lows and boost these highs up here just to kind of give it a little bit more of a sampled feel. So I'm also going to incorporate the uh, the main loop, the full loop with all the instruments. Um, and what I've done is drop this into Quick Sampler uh, and I've actually matched up the points of the transients so that it's basically identical to the keyboard loop. Um, there's a few other things that I'm going to do though to change it up and it's this filter section that we're going to, we're going to adjust. So I'm going to bring the cutoff down here. Um, and what this is basically going to do is remove some of the high frequencies from the sound. But if we use this envelope control and add a bit of depth, we can now get the filter to start open and then sort of close shut. And it creates this like cool sweeping effect.
So with the main sample sorted, uh, it was about time to add some drums. So for this, I'm using uh, Logic's Drum Machine Designer, which is really cool because you can just drop in samples and then uh, trigger them using MIDI. So uh, up here, we've got the uh, four samples that I'm using for my main beat, and then just below, you can see the MIDI pattern. So the four samples that we've got are this kick, a, a rim shot, a snare, uh, and then a clap. And the pattern that I've put down is fairly simple, but it's got a bit of swing, a bit of groove, going for something um, with a little bit of funk to it. So to help emphasize that swing, um, I've put down a hi-hat pattern as well. And this is kind of similar. I've got Drum Machine Designer with four samples in. Uh, and what I'll do is I'll play the groove and I'll actually bring each hi-hat in separately so you can kind of hear what each one is adding to, to the groove. Okay, so with that stuff done, it's time to add in some percussion. So I also wanted to add in a conga, but I don't own a conga. So I'm just gonna grab a sample from uh, the Apple Loops library um, over here. So you can just type in conga and get a bunch of different samples. So then what I might do with, with these loops is just try and find the sections that I think work really well within the track uh, and just kind of chop things up, customize it a little bit, um, and then usually just kind of copy and, and repeat them through just to get a, a sort of full section like this. Then to give this conga a bit more movement, I've just run it through Logic's auto filter. And then for even more texture, I'm gonna use uh, one of Logic's drummer tracks, uh, one of the percussion tracks in here, which is basically like an auto-generated sample that you can actually customize uh, using the controls just down here in the uh, lower section. So once I start getting to a point where I have a few tracks in the session, I'll just start tidying things up, uh, make sure tracks are properly named, color code things. If I'm in the mood, I'll add some uh, pictures and icons. And then I'll also neaten things up using uh, track stacks as well. And these are really cool. It just groups the tracks together and it means that we can apply processing on this single track stack and it will affect all the tracks in that group. So for the percussion, I'm using this Valhalla Reverb and this is what it sounds like. And then to get the percussion moving in time with the groove, I'm gonna add in a compressor and side chain it to the kick drum. And this is something that I'll also do with the hats, with the sample, uh, with the bass when we add that in in a moment, uh, basically everything's getting side chained. So for the bass in this track, I'm using a patch that I've made in Serum, which is kind of uh, my take on a sort of funky Moog bass. So it's got the filter opening and closing, sort of analog style wavetables, uh, and then an effect section with some chorus and distortion, compressor, uh, things like that.
and then I've uh, run this through a decapitator from Sound Toys, which is a saturation plugin. And again, this is just adding a bit more beef, uh, a bit more weight to the sound. And then I've taken this and I've used the chords that we put down using the uh, the key sample. Use that as my guide, and I've put down a sort of funky bass pattern. I've got two more layers that I've added in, which are these kind of uh, keyboard sort of high melodic layers, just to kind of enrich the melody and the harmony a little bit. So we have this kind of soft keys layer here, which is actually a contact uh, preset in here, the uh, taped keys, um, and it sounds a little bit like this. And then I have an RC20 on here as well, just to give it a little bit more movement and, uh, and kind of wobble. Uh, and the next instrument is this shimmer lead down here, which is cool. This is actually made from uh, another one of the samples in the sample pack. So I've taken um, the stem of the soulful lead part, um, which is kind of like a melodic part, and I've just gone in and grabbed the first note of that, which sounds like this. And then I've chopped that note out, dragged it into Quick Sampler, and what that means is we can take that single note and now play new melodies with it on our keyboard. So I'll show you guys those two new melodic parts in the context of the mix. So I also grabbed the full loop and dropped this back into the session and then basically sliced out a section where there was some kind of interesting keyboard stuff going on, thrown a load of plugins on it and processed it. And the idea behind this is it's just going to add a little bit of a lift in the middle part of this loop. So I didn't feel like I could make something funky without adding some horns. Uh, so I'm just using Logic Studio horns for this and I've dropped those into the loop as well. So those two parts in the context of the mix sound like this. So now that I've got an eight bar loop, which we can use to form the foundation of the track, I've just spent a little bit of time here just uh, adjusting and tweaking the arrangement. So what I'll usually do is, is copy sections over uh, and then start kind of messing around with it. Uh, taking different things out, moving stuff around, and also uh, build a B section, which I'm doing just here. So I'm using the same drums um, from the main loop, but then playing in a different progression using the, uh, the sampler instruments, and just kind of help things stay lively by adding and using contrast. Okay, so with the arrangement sorted, I'm going to add some guitars. And for this, I'm just using my uh, Fender Telecaster over here uh, and then I'm just putting this through some pedals and then directly into my interface and I'm using Logic's uh, Amp Designer Amp Simulator plugin in here. And the first thing that I'm going to put down is this wah guitar uh, and for this I'm using the Crybaby wah pedal which is just down here. Um, so we'll record this in now and add a bit of a funky layer. So I've added in a second guitar part as well, uh, where I wanted to have um, different moments where there was these little like lead embellishments and fills. So rather than actually sit down and write something, what I'll usually do is just set a section of the of the track to loop, and I'll just record um, loads of passes with just improvised ideas for for ages. Now, not all of them are going to be good, but some of them might be. So then I can come back later, chop out the sections that I think are cool, and then kind of arrange and sprinkle these throughout the track. <laughs> Thank you. 
Another guitar part that I have in this mix is um, just kind of originally built from these little chops that I've recorded. Uh, and by themselves, these, these little pieces don't sound particularly exciting. But then what we can do is chuck this through a Valhalla Supermassive, which is this amazing free kind of a ridiculous psychedelic reverb and delay plugin. And what we can do is adjust these um, the controls on here, including this warp control, and actually turn these little guitar chops into like crazy spatial effects. So then what I've done is just bounce those tracks down, which prints the effects uh, onto a new clip. Uh, and then we can just chop those up. And like with the other guitar parts and, and sort of other ideas in this mix, take those individual elements and sort of drop them into new places in the arrangement. So the last thing that I'm going to record in is the Korg Micro Korg synth, which I have over here. Uh, and there's a few sounds on this, which I'm going to pull out. So we'll jump over and I'll just show you those now. So the first sound is this arpeggiator. And then we're gonna record a bunch of sweeps and rises that we can also use in the arrangement. So then we can take the best of these, chop them out, uh, and use them as arrangement effects in our mix. And at this point now, most of the elements are in the track. Uh, I'll just continue to sort of refine and develop the arrangement. So I'll add in more samples, things like white noise risers, crash cymbals, reverse crash cymbals, uh, just kind of effects that are interesting and we can use to enhance transition points. Um, and just kind of tidy up the arrangement, just make sure that the, uh, the energy level is uh, sustained throughout the track uh, and the whole thing kind of feels, feels lively and exciting. So with all the stuff in place, I've taken all of the tracks and I've put them through a uh, mix bus over here. So uh, all the tracks go through this and basically what this means is any, any effects and plugins that we have on here will affect all the tracks in the mix. So we can use this uh, mix bus to do some final processing and just give a little bit more kind of extra sparkle to the track. So on here, I've got a, an SSL compressor, just gluing things together, uh, an EQ, which is just kind of enhancing the lows and the, uh, the highs, a wave center, which I'm using to kind of keep the punch uh, and low end of the mix in the center and push the highs out slightly to the side. And then finally, I've got a couple of RC20 retro colors on the mix bus. So these don't do much, if anything, throughout most of the track. Instead, I'm bringing them in at certain sections and automating the, uh, the magnitude slider um, up in the top right, which is kind of like an intensity control. And basically what this does is bring in the effects of the plugin for specific moments of the track. Cool, so that's everything in the track. I've spent a while actually going through uh, just fine tuning some of the mixing, automating some of the tracks, sorting out volume and panning and things like that. Um, but pretty much everything is done. So what I'll do now is play through the track um, and just kind of leave the logic session open so you can kind of see the track play through. So yeah, I hope you've enjoyed watching me put this track together. Um, we're really looking forward to kind of seeing what you guys make as well. So please feel free to, uh, to share your work and share your mixes uh, with us at Spirit Studios.